Welcome to Don't Quote Me On That. One day we will have an intro, but today is not that day. Hello, welcome back to Don't Quote Me On That. I'm Eleanor. I'm Kalino. And shockingly, I'm alive. And you definitely messed up that order, but it is in fact welcome back to Don't Quote Me On That for Eleanor, who has not been here for so long. Yeah, I briefly died. She does that occasionally. Usually what? around Christmas time. I have a story about Christmas time, actually, that I would love to share with the class. Okay. I don't think Eleanor wants me to share it. I don't know what story you're... Oh, it's the only story I ever tell about me and Eleanor in Christmas time. Although me and Eleanor is a generous description of how Christmas went. Specifically the word and. I have recalled that I was left that Christmas to go, for you to go to Mass. You and I are talking about different Christmases. What Christmas are you talking about? Okay, so there was, what was first Christmas, we didn't talk to each other. Second Christmas, Twilight. Yeah. Right? Third Christmas. What happened on the third Christmas, Eleanor? I have a feeling me not remembering is is the point <laughs> of your story. No, the third Christmas, <clears throat> I'll paint the scene. Eleanor, what are you doing for Christmas this year? Oh, Eleanor. oh nothing. Oh, oh no. <laughs> me, Eleanor, do you want to <laughs> hang out together in the place that we are currently <laughs> living for Christmas? Eleanor says, yeah, sure, that sounds great. I kid you not, about three weeks before <laughs> Christmas, Eleanor was like, hey, wouldn't it be so crazy if I defense, bailed on the plans that I came up with? And I was like, that, that is not, there, there were other circumstances. Yeah, not in my version of the story, which is the only version that matters okay. because Eleanor doesn't like to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the only one talking about it. So my version is the one that stands. <laughs> That's a lesson for everybody on how history books are written. Yeah. Written by the victors, and I. I didn't feel like a winner. No, we both <laughs> lost that. this with you. Um, also, I, I did have a question. I know we won't be uploading the video for this, but I know how to spell your name. Why does your mug have a C on it? I also know how to spell your family's name. You're missing one. There's another one in there. The, yeah, the cat's name straight, doesn't start working. with a C. <laughs> I got three names, dude. Oh, I'm so sorry. I thought, I, I forgot it was the rational choice of having a cup themed for your middle name. No, actually, it was the rational choice of they had mugs with letters on them on sale. So we have a C, we've got an E, there's a D <laughs> in there somewhere. No one in my family's got a D in their name. Um, there's a D I in your I think last we name. might have an H. So can't resist a good bargain you know okay fair enough fair enough and they're cute they are cute whenever i make just... like tea for the family in them i like make sure my dad gets the e because that's his like middle name you know i try to like assign them appropriately so this one's mine also because okay. i like the color it's a cute color um anyway another great christmas we had we went to scotland and then on actual christmas we watched Every single Twilight. And we finished... <laughs> we, I, would like to, I would like to paint the scene. It's very important. It's not just that we watched every single Twilight. It's we made a whole bunch of coquito. And I mean like a pot full of coquito because we didn't have a mm -hmm. pitcher big enough. And then sat in chairs in the living room because we were the only two people in the house. And watched every single Twilight movie back to back. We only got up for like pee breaks. Mm -hmm. And then topped it all. We took like I think a 10 minute break. Um... We watched Eclipse, we got 10 minutes into Breaking Dawn and had to walk away for a little bit. I think that's when we ate dinner. I think we yeah. left it paused <laughs> while we made pizza. Because that's just emotionally not what the human body was meant to go through. No. Then finished Breaking Dawn Part 1, finished Breaking Dawn Part 2, moved immediately into Peter Pan, the live action, which is <laughs> a childhood favorite of mine. And on its own, I don't think it's like a a tearjerker of a movie but we were a little tender after all the twilight movies and the end of that movie is like 
a family is reunited. Peter Pan has to go back and, and we're just, it's a little sad. We were a little emo about Peter yeah, Pan for a while. We were a lot emo. And I think I had worse Christmases. Oh, for sure. Like the one you just talked about. <laughs> it was immediately <laughs> after that, actually. Yeah, it was it was a bit of a of a double whammy. Um but it was good. Dying for the chance to do that again. I think we need, you need like a good like five year break in between though. Yeah, so we'll be good. A couple more years. Well, One more year. Well, well, no, it'd be this year. No, I mean yeah. next year. Next year. No, the the of the watching Twilight one that was twenty eighteen. That was twenty nineteen. No, twenty nineteen. No, it was twenty eighteen. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. You're right. Oh, th- man. We'll go for six years. <laughs> <laughs> Ten. <laughs> I don't like the number six. You know, gotta gotta be on a zero. Okay. Seven. All right. Speaking well, you know, of numbers, just... you know what yeah. has numbers? <laughs> I was gonna go rest. for speaking of holidays. <laughs> The best holiday um, of the year just by, passed. This um, this show, this specific episode of this show, seeks to answer the question that I definitely saw on a tweet and didn't make up myself. Can an Apple Music lover and a Spotify <laughs> lover really, really work? And the answer is yes. Yeah, the answer is mostly. What's uh, the key yeah, to was, a strong foundation? It was Spotify Wrapped Day, and the day before that was, uh... I'll be honest, I don't even know what the Apple one is called. I think it's called Rewind, or Re... I have it right here, I could look. <laughs> Apple Music Replay, which isn't as good of a name. Uh, also isn't as fun graphics. Um, doesn't give you information that's as fun. <laughs> and is, uh, honestly, not as good in any way. <laughs> But uh, I have personal beef with Spotify, so unfortunately, this is what we're stuck with. And I think, I think if I really wanted to, I could look it up and see which streaming service paid their artists better, and just get really annoying about why I use Apple Music. But that's not true. I don't like it because uh, you can't use Spotify Premium in different countries. It'll lock you out of the account, and I travel too much to. Uh, have to deal with that because i think i would go insane if i had to be on a plane without my downloaded music i have what i like to call i don't have spotify premium because i believe that spending money is how the devil gets you so what i do is i have albums that are downloaded on my phone and i didn't do them download them for this express purpose but this is what they have turned into my plane albums and they are um the essential michael jackson disc 2 and the first Pierce the Veil album ever made. And then I got, the, like... The first what album? Pierce the Veil album okay. ever made, okay. when it was just the two brothers um, who did played literally every single instrument and did all of the vocals. And then also I have a few random songs here and there. So one of them is... I know we don't like this guy, but... I don't want to incriminate myself on the internet. <laughs> He's not benefiting from my streaming of this song, um, Ansel Elgort has a song called Supernova that unfortunately is very good. I have mm-hmm. that downloaded on there. There's a song by that guy who was on Shameless and also I think he was on the Fosters and if he wasn't on the Fosters, he was on the like sequel they made. Good Trouble or whatever it's called. Mm-hmm. Um What's his name? He's He's a trans guy, if that helps. Oh, oh, oh. That yeah, guy. I know who you're talking about. I don't know his name. Okay, yeah, a song he made, and then a couple of the random. The Fosters. Oh, I've got a couple of songs off of one of Fall, one of Fall Out Boy's albums. The, um, is it Mania? The, like, neon light looking one? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that Mania. one. Yeah. Lately on Planes, I have been listening to, um, either... Boy Genius or Troy Sivan, which is a little bit embarrassing. I did. I think you'll get a kick out of the story. I don't think I told you. So I just, I was on, 
a really long work trip and I was bebopping from country to country. Um, and so I had the bright idea that I would download a lot of albums to listen to them. And um, I downloaded two different Paramore albums and each album I thought was a completely different album to the one that I downloaded. Um, and I didn't have that realization until I was listening to them. Well, one of them I didn't have the realization until it was over and the thought, the song that I thought was on it wasn't on it. Um, <laughs> and the other one I had while I was listening to it because I thought it was their first album and then it, it, it wasn't. So I got too embarrassed to actually download the right albums because that's a normal thing. That's totally to do. normal. That happens all the time. I don't yeah. know if this ever happens to you. This happens to me with the Pierce the Veil album because I do try to I like read and watch movies on planes. So music's mostly for like when my screen is off or like I've closed the book. I'm like maybe trying to nap or whatever and just chilling or like when we're about to land. This is usually when I put music on. Um, so like I I know word for word every single song off of that Pierce the Veil album, but I don't know any of the song names and I couldn't tell you when one song and one song begins because I just kind of listen to them straight through and don't look at the phone mm-hmm. so the song will come on i'm like oh my god i love this song but if someone asked me what it was i'd be accused of like being a fake fan because i could not tell you also they have like weird fallout not fa- not to that level but fallout boy e titles mm-hmm. where it's kind of like i don't really know how you got that from what you're singing about but okay no i i feel you um that's how i am with one of one of the Troy Sivan albums that I've been listening to, I, what I did was I listened to the album all the way through, and I had some other songs um, of it on like my main playlist, mm-hmm. and I found myself when I was listening to the songs come up on the playlist, I, was like, it was like physically jarring when the next song wasn't a Troy Sivan song because <laughs> I would shuffle yeah. it, <laughs> and so now I don't think I can listen to that like outside of a, um, outside of the yeah. full album. But, you want to get into it? Yes. Speaking of albums. I Albums you want to start with? Oh, whatever you want. I was just trying to segue nicely. Um, let's start with artists. Because We're a little rusty. We, I think artists was the only thing we talked about before um, we got our, our respective wrapped and replays. Um, we're, I, I have two questions. Mostly because yes. I want to answer them about myself, but also I'm nosy. <laughs> um... Were you surprised by any of the artists on yours? Yes. One I was surprised was so high up that it made my top five. Okay. And then two. Are your artists... Have they been, like, consistent throughout the year for the most part? Like, throughout the, the years? Yes. This is the first year there were there were changes. There was there's um two artists. Well, there's one artist to be fair who's usually in my top. Actually, I'm sorry. Yeah, there's two artists that are always in my top 5 that are not here. They are completely they've completely disappeared. Oh. I'll let you guess who they are. Okay. Why not now? We'll okay. New Year's first. Well, well, no, I so who aren't the, I don't have your list up, but I'm assuming the Eagles are still there. Yes, of course. Coulter Wall. That's no, a good one, was... but no. That was okay. he I think he was on there last year though. I'm assuming Pierce the Veil was still on there. They're not. They're usually on there. They're on oh. there every single year. This is the first year okay. they're not up there. Yeah. And then I remember you're you missing a one big the... one. What Eagles Pierce the Veil? Like one other facet of my personality. <laughs> is it M M&M? Yeah. Not on there this year. <laughs> Interesting. I, I remember you told me um, that one of the artists surprised you, and I don't remember all of the other artists, but I remember looking at your list and in my head going, "Oh, this is the one that surprised you." Can I can I guess that now and blow up yes. another artist of yours? Was it Fall Out yeah. Boy? No. Who was that it? didn't surprise. I knew they were going to be on there. Okay. Okay. Well, go through yours. Okay, so um, my Eagles were number one because they always are. I yeah. mean, they're top zero point. One percent of listeners worldwide, which I'm I'll be honest, I don't think I have a lot of competition. Okay, they're not doing numbers. Yeah, it's just um, you and white dads who don't know what Spotify is. Yeah, exactly. Eagles are number one. Number two was Five Seconds of Summer. I wasn't surprised they were on there. I was surprised they were so high. 
but I think I like listened to them a lot before we went to their concert. Mm-hmm. Then third was Mona Skin, which I figured they were going to be on there because it was like the first time you listen. Like, I think they were like the first time you listened to them was in January. And I was like, yeah, that's when their album <laughs> came out. I kind of never stopped. Um, and then the artist that surprised me was number four was 303. I just didn't think they'd be so high up. Okay. I don't think I listen to 303 that often. And then number five was Fall Out Boy. What I knew I listened to a lot to Fall Out Boy a lot because I went to see them over the summer. And then I really liked their new album live. So I listened to that a lot afterwards. How many of your top artists did you see in concert this year? Two of them. Two yeah, of two of them. Okay. That's me too. So those are my top artists. Um, Mine. Not really, okay. not, yeah, not surprised so much. Just you know, in I terms of how high up they were, that's all. Mm-hmm. I could see that. Yours. Anything I should I should um, look out for, be surprised by? I'm shocked um, at all? No, I think they're all... Can I guess one? Yeah. That Noah Khan feller. Yeah. Kahan. I'm sorry if he Khan. says his name is Khan, he's wrong. There's two A's in it. I don't like the A in there. I don't like the the, the A just goes missing. Just take it out if you're not going to say it, you know? That's what I'm saying. If you're committed to having two A's in there, you better pronounce them. Yeah. Because I'm sorry, there's a lot of cons in the world. I don't know if you've seen how they spell their names. Not like that. It does not have an extra A in it. They go straight to Also, how do you get that name? I I don't... I have a lot of... Either way, he makes great music. I, I drive to him a lot. Mm-hmm. Which like you know with three hundred three? Bad idea. He, oh, oh, You're not oh! I don't make smart. I, I <laughs> yeah. No, that that ship has sailed. Um, but yeah, he was my my fifth artist, right mm. in under the wire. Uh, my first artist will shock nobody. It was Taylor Swift. Um, I don't. Wow. I don't have a lot to say to defend myself. That's there. wild. Uh, my second artist was Five Seconds of Summer. High five! Oh my god, did you see them in concert? Yeah, I did actually. How was that? I heard it they were really good. It was really good. They played wrapped around my finger. They played wrapped around <laughs> your finger. <laughs> yes, they did. Uh, number three, Carly Rae Jepsen. Ooh, I forget you like her. I love not her. Not forget, it's just she's never on my radar for me to be like, like, if One Direction comes up, I'm like, I know someone who loves One Direction. <laughs> Carly Rae Jepsen doesn't really come up in casual conversation. Okay, well, she comes up in most of my conversations. She's I did put a Niall she's Horan an song on our Christmas playlist at work just for you. Which one? This Town, I think. It was like on the, like, we added a bunch of Christmas songs, and then that was one of the ones that was on, like, the suggested to add. I was trying to for the, I was trying for the Christmas song. songs. Yeah, I was trying for the Christmas songs and not just strictly be about Christmas. I wanted some variety in there. Because there's only so many song. times. I'm not putting that on our work playlist. <laughs> um, there's only so many times I can hear the word Christmas before I lose my mind. Yeah, I have decided that I'm not a I'm not a Christmas person. I'm definitely I've I never been a Christmas, do a Christmas music playlist. Person. Yeah, I wasn't going to do a Christmas play as my coworker put it together, and everyone at work seems to, like, the clients at work seem to like it. So I threw in, like, my own, like, variety. So I just heard this song called Cowgirl for Christmas, so I put that on there. I put um, Miley Cyrus's version of Happy Christmas War is Over. I put a lot of Pentatonix, because Pentatonix yeah. does a banger Christmas they album. They make Christmas, yeah. You ever heard them sing Little Drummer Boy or Mary Did You Know? First of all, those songs by themselves make me sad them singing it um i did have to refrain from from going to the punk coast i was about to ask because i but i have been debating it look the problem is the only one i think that is work friendly or like general public friendly is all time low and we're not streaming them yeah i they're being dramatic on instagram which is a choice yeah i saw i saw a lot about that (laughs) number four Sorry. This this one this one surprised me. Um, Can I guess? I'm gonna be way off base because everyone yeah, you've covered, I'm not I think I knew. Sure, you've even heard of this band, so yeah, please guess away. It's going to be. It's a band. Yes. Oh, there's one on the tip of my tongue. You listen to sometimes. 
I can't think of it, so I'm going to say neon trees. I know that's it, not it, but, like, okay. that's my guess. <laughs> it, incorrect. Um, they're called the Rex. Oh, yeah, I wasn't going to get that. Yeah. Um, I, the weird thing is, they were one of the bands this year where whenever they came up on my playlist, I'd skip them because I heard them too much. So I guess it makes sense that I they were my, my fourth artist because I listened to them enough to get sick of them. Yeah. Um, like, I, I think that's what happens to the Eagles, I think. Like, I feel like playtime-wise, I don't listen to them necessarily as much, but I have so many Eagle songs on my mm-hmm. playlist that just, in sheer, like, quantity, they beat everyone else out. Yeah. It's interesting... Two, so the Rex and Five Seconds of Summer, who are two and four on my list, they're both artists where I have, in my big old brain, vivid memories of their songs coming up and me immediately skipping it because I had too many of them on my playlist. Yeah. Um, or with Five Seconds of Summer, for me, what's funny, until, like, not until after the concert, I didn't listen, I didn't have a lot of their songs on my playlist because I was a Five Seconds of Summer five hater, as we all recall and didn't like calm was like okay so i had like didn't have a lot of songs but the songs i had on my playlist were bangers and Mm -hmm. i did repeat them and like play them into the ground teeth easier those were on a cast away cast away god so yeah yeah overall i don't think i think the wreck surprised me but all of the other ones are standard and i don't know who would have been number six or like who would have been fifth if the Rex weren't on there. But I have my, I have my other top artists and they're all a little bit embarrassing. So we can move on. I think my number six probably would have been Pierce the Veil or Eminem. Just again, in terms of just sheer number of songs I have mm-hmm. on there. Um, also, you want to do, I'm sorry. Go. Oh, since I asked you, I also saw two people on my list live this year. One of them was, was Five Seconds of Summer. <laughs> what, which one? Yeah, I know Taylor Swift. What was the second one? That's wild. <laughs> <laughs> um, you want to do album next? I only have my top album. I don't have, like, my top five. Yeah, I have my top five albums. All right, you go first. All um, right. Can I, can I guess? Well, I'm going to guess how many of your top artists are in your top albums. I'm going to say okay. a conservative... Three. Okay. Close. Two. Oh. Um, I figured it was a middle number. I couldn't go wrong. <laughs> yeah. I think part of it is to, my top number one and my number two album, I only listened to as albums. So I didn't listen to mm. these artists a lot, like, separately, which is why mm-hmm. they're top albums and not top artists. You're a big album listener. I'm not really an album listener. Unless it's, like, first come out. I'm not usually, but the two on these, they, ha- they like, came out this year, and so I've been... Like, she didn't to- just say, she was just talking about downloading albums on planes, but yeah, not usually. Okay, well, that's true. I, because I don't like downloading <laughs> my playlist for the, well, I have it downloaded, but, like, I like an album because you can control the vibe a little bit more than you can with a playlist, and on a plane, like, I don't need... There are some songs I don't need jump scaring me on a plane because I'm scared enough up there. Have you heard of a plane playlist? Like a like a P L A I N playlist because that sounds boring. Also, I can't create too many playlists because I won't ever keep them updated. I have one playlist and that's it. Because if I have more than one, I get too overwhelmed and I can't keep track of them. So my one playlist is skewed more towards driving. Right. Okay. Moving you, on. You um, asked. Albums. You asked I don't the think question. I did. You actually. did. You asked me if I'd ever heard of a played album. And I gave you my, my honest answer from the bottom of my heart. No, you were answering. A, yeah, you answered that question. And you started to answer a question I did not even ask. A related question. That I anyway, did not ask. my top five albums in order. The first one is "The Dark" by the band Camino, because that I went, was it. That was the one I was going to guess, but I couldn't remember if they okay. were called Camino or the band Camino. They're, I the don't want to be wrong. And they were sixth, so you get like half yeah. a point. Actually, no, you were just mean to me. You get no points. 
I get all the points. Never wrong. Over here, folks. Uh, the second album was Troye Vaughn's latest album, Something to Give Each Other. Not surprising. The third, Five Sauce Five. Not surprising. The fourth what is a choice. Is Rush by Mona Skin. That's embarrassing for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the fifth is The Loneliest Time by uh, our queen, Carly Rae Jepsen. I'm surprised Taylor Swift wasn't on there. I don't usually listen to her albums. And, and, sure. because um, each album she produces, or she's put out, has, like, probably, conservatively, at least three versions to listen to. And when I, like, add her to a playlist or whatever, I just pull songs from the search. So when you have True. the same yeah. album in a lot of different iterations, it's really hard to have, like, one that you play over and over again. Fair enough. What's your top album? It's, um, it's called Hell Freezes Over. It's a live album by the Eagles. <laughs> it's the first album I ever remember listening to. Uh, it has a beautiful version of Hotel California on it. Not that any it version does. of Hotel California is bad. And also it has um, Wasted Time, which apparently... I'm sorry, not Wasted Time. It does have Wasted Time on there. It has New York Minute on there, which legally my father would like everyone to know is not an Eagles song. It is, in <laughs> fact, a Don Henley song. And I just want to talk to Don Henley. Why are you having your band play your solo music if you don't want people to be confused? Well, One Direction members do the opposite, where they sing One Direction songs in their solo things. So, I mean, there's precedence for for the waters to be getting a little muddied. I don't think... First of all, precedence. I think the <laughs> Eagles are the precedence. Second I'm all, pretty sure One Direction like was can, invented like, before the Eagles. I feel like you can't, like, whip out a Hotel California if you're not just the full-fledged Eagles. I don't know if you've ever heard a cover of Hotel California. Tell me how it sounds. I I haven't because I I think you'd like manifest in front of me and, and strangle <laughs> <What do you> me. <laughs> I'll tell you, not great. Like it's good because it's Hotel California and it's not a bad song, but like it's not the Eagles singing Hotel California. I did. Um, I was at a restaurant once a couple months ago, and there was a singer. It was just like her and her little guitar. Um, not like a ukulele, I'm just being mean, because she wasn't very good. Um, she did sing a Harry Styles song and then go immediately into Hotel California. And not only were they both not good, um, <laughs> I didn't need them right next to each other. <laughs> That's, um... I can't even say I, like, see what she was going for there, because I don't. No. It, it, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't good. I'm sorry, random woman. <laughs> if you're listening to this, yeah. then you know who Eleanor is. Yeah. Do I don't better. even remember what restaurant I was at. Yeah, do better. <laughs> I was going to say something. Oh, kind of um, sort of the opposite of you with Taylor Swift in terms of like you're just adding, you know, it might be the same song that she has on. You might have this song on one album, but you're adding it from the other versions. With Hotel, with like the Eagles, part of the reason that's my number one album is I will default to that album for their song. So, like, I mm. will specific Just because that's, like, the version that I first heard and that's cemented in my brain. So, like, if I'm looking for Hotel California, I always put the Hotel California off of Hell Freezes Over because that's my favorite version. Um, Like, Wasted Time. Like, all of those songs, I will default to the Hell Freezes Over album before I look at their other albums. And then after that, I look at... There's another album by them I like Um, that I'll default to that second. So, it's okay. usually got to be one of those two. That makes sense. And then again, in terms of sheer number of songs that I of of them that I have, that's fair. For a while, I had that um, that that album saved too, but I think I just have one or two songs. It's a good album, isn't it? Like an hour and a half long. Probably it was a live show, so probably okay. Well, yeah, that's why they pulled out uh, New York Minute because so maybe somebody came just to, for Don Henley. I'm sure there are people in the world that like him and not the... <laughs> if you meet one, send them my way because I have some questions. <laughs> I think it's like, it brings to me it brings up the conversation of like, 
I can only think of five seconds of summer right now, but like band sound versus solo artist from the band sound. Yes. Is is he performing it? Like just him solo? Oh, no, it's the or whole is the band, whole band, performing, band it. performing it. Like to be fair, he like okay. Don Henley and this guy Glenn Fry were sort of like the main songwriters of the Eagles. And then Don Henley is one of the main vocalists for the Eagles. And he also plays the drums a la, like, Phil Collins sort of vibe, drummer, singer. So, like, Hotel California is Don Henley singing. So, like, him taking lead on vocals isn't unusual. So, like, in New York Minute, he's singing the song because, like, it's his song. But, like, the band is playing. The band is doing the backing vocals. You know what I mean? But, like, him singing okay. solo All in right. a Hotel it's... California song isn't necessarily unusual either. Okay. All right. I mean, it's a good yeah. version of the song. It's good. That's the version I prefer. <laughs> it's the only version of the song I've ever heard. I personally think it's better. Um. Like, there, I think it's different, back to our favorite topic, when you have a full band that plays together. It feels different than, like, even though it's mm. still his song he wrote and he was a part of, different than him writing a song and bringing it to musicians that he does not work with regularly to play versus the Eagles. Yeah. Um, but I think we talked about this with, like, Luke Hemmings and... I don't think... Did you listen to Ashton Irwin's solo stuff? Okay. I did not. I listened to Luke Hemming's solo stuff. That was enough? Did, um, they're yeah. okay as a so band. Like, yeah. and like, not like his stuff was awful, but like not the vibe we prefer. Whereas I think with mm-hmm. Don Henley, a lot of his stuff is very thematically and tonally similar to the Eagles. So, but also, like I said, he's like a main driving force in that band, so that kind of makes sense. Uh, whereas I think with um, Five Seconds of Summer, it might be a little bit more evenly distributed. So, mm-hmm. the differences in sound from group to solo make sense because they get to lean really heavily into one side. Or well, maybe they shouldn't. That makes sense. <laughs> That's different. I've seen a lot of tweets Correct lately that are like, Callum Hood solo stuff win, and I said never. I think he should do oh. what um that girl that girl from Monaskin's doing. She was featured on um someone's cover of Psycho Killer. And but she just like played the bass and did backing mm-hmm. vocals. I think Callum Hood should like go a la that route, you know? <laughs> yeah. And I mean Michael's working on a solo project of his own. Is it his baby? Exploiting his oh, new baby. I could talk about that forever. Don't bring it up. I mean, do what you uh, want with your own so, children. You know. But, like, have some sense. Anyway. And not, like, sense, like, the kind that the magazine paints you for that feature. Common sense. Anyway. <laughs> Moving quickly on. Anyway. Songs. Songs? Can I guess how many of your top artists are do in you your songs? Go? Oh, no. Yeah, I'll go first, actually. Do you want to guess how uh, many of my top artists are in this song? Go. I, I'm gonna have a bold guess. I'm gonna go oh, four. You should have gone for a bold guess in the other direction. It's one. However, oh. some of the artists you mentioned earlier that we thought would be in my top artists are on here, so I am still like somewhat consistent. My top song okay. <clears throat> was "Read Your Diary" by Monaskin. I played it 28 times, starting on the 29th Absolutely. of January. I would like you all to guess when that album came out. <laughs> um, and then it was two was this song called Figure Out Figure You Out by this band called I guess it you know when people on TV say voila but they spell it with a V? Yeah. That's yeah. the name of the band, right? And uh, Okay. I don't know how I heard this. But it's a really good song. And then it turns out, this has nothing to do with anything, but I just wanted to share this with you. I've been meaning to tell you. So this is, it's like two people in this band, and one guy is the boyfriend. He's an actor, and he's the boyfriend of this girl that pops up on my TikTok a lot, who I don't like. And then everyone was like, and she's okay. a model actress, right? And everyone was like, oh my god, I love your video. And then she told a story, and everyone's like, she's kind of weird. And I was like, oh my god, I said that. And her name... I'm going to air out her my dirty laundry. Her name is Kirby or something. She's like redhead. She's redheaded. And then her boyfriend's blonde. Yeah. Anyway, 
no hate mm-hmm. to her personally. I just don't like people. So she shouldn't take that personally. That's just me. That's a me thing. Um, anyway, her boyfriend's in this band. But unfortunately, their band makes really good music. And I really like this song. Um, the <laughs> gist of the song is he's like, I could love you with my eyes closed. He's like, your boyfriend bought you a penthouse. When is he going to learn that you're afraid of heights? And your boyfriend brought you tickets to the rap show. When is he going to learn that you like the Rolling Stones? Which is like is a little simplistic. But basically, like, I wouldn't even have to try to love you. It'd be so easy for me. It'd be as easy as breathing. And you know how I said that? Hosier. Speaking of, love that guy. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> I figured we'd hit all our points while we were there. Is it? Wait, what's the full name of the B-O-I-L-A. band? B-O-I-L-A. Just... That is the full name of the band. Is yeah. it, it's just Voila? Okay. Because okay. Cause I, I googled them to try to figure out what TikTok you were talking about. And apparently there's one called um, Voila Beach. And they d- died. Not those guys. Her TikTok was about yeah. this guy that was friends or like the manager of or something to do with her boyfriend that she didn't really like but always had to play nice with when he came around and she was telling some story about him and everyone was like yeah that's not that doesn't make you look the way you think it makes you look which is embarrassing i just like might be a little bit of a hater and it might be worse when it's like, <laughs> i told someone when I said, I'm not a hater. And before I could finish the sentence, she goes, yes, you are. And I was like, yeah, a little bit. You know? I do have her <laughs> blocked on TikTok. I'm not that. No, you got to hate watch. But um, you know when people are like, it costs nothing to be kind. Do you know what else is free and more fun? It costs nothing to be mean. <laughs> listen, I, and listen, again, I will tell you anytime I come to someone and tell them, I come to my friend and I'm like, I don't like her. My friend goes, do you like, you don't like anyone, which is fair. So again, don't take this personally. It's a me thing. But like, also, I've met you before. I've You're never usually been wrong. right. Like, I think, like, if, if we had followed one gut feeling that you had oh about somebody, we would have, we'd be in wildly different so many, places in my life I could right talk now. about that all day too. Moving on. That was my number two <laughs> song. So figure you out. Very good. Um, number three. This is just getting worse for me. I think it gets better after this. Number three was um, it was "Can't Look Back" by a Mister Machine Gun Kelly. Okay. Unfortunately, a banger. Yeah. No. What can I say? Total banger. Number four was "Tabloid Junkie" by Michael Jackson. Ten out of ten song. It's a song about. I'm giving all this in background and for Eleanor. Um, Tabloid Junkie is a song basically <laughs> oh actually every time I listen to this song I think of you um, it's a song about how the like the press and the paparazzi just like take a story and run with it about him so they're like oh like he's like they say he's homosexual basically about himself and the line that always makes me think of you is <laughs> um, she's blonde and she's bisexual <laughs> <laughs> um, but basically like they're harassing thank, him thank he's got a lot of songs about that it's a common theme in his music and then my last song is So Far So Fake off of by Pierce the Veil. It's off their new album. And I think it was when I first listened to I liked the album but didn't love it. So that was the only song I like could listen to repeatedly. So I think I did for a while because I just wanted new Pierce the Veil. So that's why it's there. I'm surprised it's that high. Okay. Fair enough. You've got a yeah. good mix in your list. No Eminem still. I'm shocked. I don't know what know. happened to him this year. He didn't do a lot either. Yeah. To be fair, like I listen to Eminem throughout my playlist, but it'll usually pick up if he drops something. And I think he only did like one feature at the end of the year that I listened to at least. I mean, you had an MGK song on there, not an I know. Eminem song, so this is a crime. One. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's a banger. Tickets to my downfall. Okay, how many of my top artists do you think I had? I'm gonna be my... bold and say four. I was gonna say five, but four. I feel safe with four. Okay. So it's two, but it's also three. So there's two artists, but they take up uh. three different spots. So uh, top song of the year, fifty six <laughs> plays, hit, getting real big <laughs> numbers there. Uh, Blender oh by five God. seconds of well, summer. I bet you listen to that while you're driving. I, d- I would like to say this song is like maybe two minutes long, so I will usually listen to it twice if it, it comes yeah. up. And it's a good car song. 
It's a it banger. It gives very... I didn't love it this much at first, but it gives, like, the first time we heard Red Desert in your car, that sort of vibe. Mm-hmm. And it's it's just fun. And it is an amazing driving song. It's a good song. Exactly. Number two. Uh, 52 Ooh. plays. Another big hitter. <laughs> Flatline by <laughs> Actually, my top five songs were just five seconds of summer five. No, just the top two. Uh, Flatline, also banger. Great driving song. the best song off that album. Number three. The best song off that album is Blender, but You're missing the second best song off that album. You don't go to parties. Banger. Bad Omens. Oh, yeah. Good driving song. Banger. Uh, uh, take my hand, Joshua Tree version. Can't listen to that. <laughs> I would like to hear the regular version. <laughs> Great song. First. Mm. Still missing that. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Five seconds of summer. Blender. Flatline. Yeah. Number three. We're moving on for five seconds of summer. <laughs> Rush by Troy Sivan. Because uh, I have nothing. She just went from Rush by Monaskin to <laughs> Rush by Troy Sivan. Yeah. Number four, an artist who I'm kind of surprised wasn't, uh, didn't show up more in my top albums or uh, top artists. I've got Body Better by Maisie mm. Peters. You like that girl. Uh, she released, I do. She released an album this year called The Good Witch. And most of it is really good. And that's all we can ask for. She released a deluxe version a couple weeks ago that I have not listened to, but apparently del- deluxe tracks are good and i think she uses the word cocaine in a song which we all know Mm -hmm. tends to make a song better but not a person men no not usually not like if it's a consistent sort of thing that's uh, number five rounding it out got another one of my top artists miss carly Mm. ray jepson with bad thing twice um which is on here for a very embarrassing reason that I'm not going to tell the internet, but I Ooh, will tell Kalina later it. in yes, private if she would course. like. I haven't talked to you in so long. It, so it has to do with the. Well, this has happened in like. No, I just just in general. January. Just in general. Okay. I didn't tell you at the time because I was embarrassed by it. When are you not embarrassed? That shouldn't I, stop you. I still am. I will make fun of you whether you're embarrassed or not. So yeah. I think you should just bite the bullet and tell me. Thank that you. is a good point. But not yeah. shocked. Again, shocked a um, Taylor Swift song. It wasn't on there, but probably there's so many of them. It's kind of hard to be like this yeah. one stuck out. I I had like a good couple weeks where I got Dear John stuck in my head. This is after we recorded too, like months after we recorded that episode. And I just had to listen to Dear John on loop just for the the chorus. Dear John, don't you think I was too young? I was like, don't you think I was... Yeah, I get really into that song. She was too young. You know, dream. And the girl in the dress did cry the whole way home. I don't like... Like, I stopped there. I don't like the song after that point. So She starts talking about fireworks. She's doing too much. (laughs) So you don't like it when women shine like fireworks over your sad empty town? when women... <laughs> yeah. I oh my goodness. I was at uh, I was at a dinner the other day, like a like a work function. And somebody the question came up, I don't really know how it came up, was um if you were going to get canceled, what do you think it would be for? And I answered the question <laughs> faster than anybody else at the table. I had my answer locked and loaded. I said misogyny, and people looked at me funny. But also it's right. I'm surprised I haven't been at this point. I'm not a misogynist, but I do think sometimes it can be funny to be one. I just, disclaimer, okay, I coach a bunch of, like, I do coach a bunch of kids, and some of them are, are girls. So, a disclaimer, I think girls are great and fantastic and can do anything, okay? I just think it's... Mm-hmm. We yes. love and support women. Um, I just think it's funny when we lean into the misogyny because we're aware of it, so it's not internalized misogyny. And two, it's so much better than a man being misogynistic, okay? I have valid points. (laughs) 
And, like, mm-hmm. sometimes you got to tell people they're stupid. And it's also, like, men are worse. Listen, I love yeah. telling you. And, I'm, honestly, I think it could be seen as us really being progressive because we're not letting women, the hook. you know, get away yeah. with these things. Yeah, we're holding them accountable. Like, I love telling a man he's stupid, and but, like, I'm not going to call it whatever the opposite of misogyny is because that doesn't exist. We just have a word for it. Yeah, that's just yeah. being right. So. Love and respect women. They're great. And, like, it's okay to say that sometimes B-words be crazy. Because I stand by that. That's a gender-neutral term. Like, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Dude. Bro. Pookie. (laughs) Gender-neutral. I'd like to revisit that last one. (laughs) Honey. Um, I would... I would like the record to show that's the first time I've ever said that word out loud. <laughs> I didn't loud. like it. Um, because I'm scared that if I start using it, I'm not going to be able Sweetheart. to Sweetheart? That's so, a good one. There's this old guy at one. my job. Um, not old. Older guy at my job. Um, he's like old New York fella, and he calls the my male coworker honey, and I think it's so funny. I like honey. Using honey makes me think Using of honey Pooh, makes me think love. of... God, I could do with a cup of tea right now. <laughs> Our, oh, Eleanor got me honey when I came to visit her. So then I walked around. Every time I used that jar of honey, I was like, it's honey from my honey. And no one laughed any of the times <laughs> I said it. But I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> I know. That's funny. That was like, that's a knee slapper every time you say it. But anyway. Every single time. I think that's all the crossover we have in terms of like what apple music pulls and what spotify pulls and also we've been here for a while so i think we mm-hmm. should pick a couple other things but breeze through them we know how to do that be efficient no we don't i'm gonna do it anyway what's the most embarrassing stat okay. that apple music gave you um see the thing is i keep trying to log in so i can look at the other stats but I don't know my password. So So what I'm gonna do is have you chit chat first and I'm gonna try to figure lovely. my password okay. out. So my most embarrassing stat was Spotify did this thing that was my sound town, right? And it was like it was like <laughs> what what city in the world do you belong to? Even though every single one I saw posted was America, so I don't think they were being very diverse, but whatever. Um and, like, what set city you should go to because this is where listeners were also fans of something you liked. And mine, I didn't see anyone else post this because people on Twitter were like, Spotify is trying to start a lesbian commune and a gay commune and a bisexual commune in these three cities. So, like, retweet which one you got. And I was like, I didn't get any of those. I got Ithaca. Burlington, yeah, I got Vermont? Ithaca, USA. First of all, don't even know where that is. Second of all, it's in New York. That checks out, unfortunately, because Ithaca, mm-hmm. it says, for fans of original Broadway cast of Hadestown, Hadestown Original Broadway Company, and Anais, Anais Mitchell. I am surprised they weren't, like, you had no Broadway press on I'm not on that bad. I anything. did. Actually, forgot to mention to you, Spotify okay. did do my top genres. and made it look like a little sandwich. Oh, <laughs> um, and... <laughs> I think all of the ones on I don't think they're surprising the ones that are on here. It's rock pop Broadway um pop punk and rap. So who's shocked by any of that stuff? Yeah, that sounds right. Not me. No one. And I didn't think like yeah, I get a little insane about Hades Town occasionally but like i don't i don't think i listen to it that often and i don't listen to like broadway in general as much as i used to like i've got like one song from anastasia i think on the playlist a couple from Hades Town, but it's not like yeah 2016 um i think i think i went over this with eleanor one time years ago but i think in like 2016 2017 one of my top albums or artists or whichever one it was was hamilton i don't even like hamilton but what happened was when I was writing <laughs> essays in school, I would listen to, I don't remember the name of the song even, but it's a song where they're like, um, James Madison wrote 
this number of papers. This guy wrote this number. And Hamilton wrote the other 51. And he goes, how do you write like you're running out of time? Write day and night like you're running out of time. And that's what I needed to do to finish my essay. So it was good motivation. That makes sense. Do you still need me to keep talking? I, um, unfortunately, yeah. But I was going to say, Hamilton is coming to um, a venue near me. But it's in the summer where I'm already booked up. And I think you're triple booked. Also... (laughs) So I'm not going to oh, mention it. Oh, Hades Town's coming in January, so I'm probably going to go see that. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm gonna, I text my mom and brother. I was like, I'm dragging you all along t- t- with me. No choice. I saw um, Lion King Was that good? This year. Yeah, it was. That's on my list. Um, was- we want to go see Hades Town so bad because Jordan Fisher's in it. I don't know if you guys have seen Jordan Fisher. Cutie patootie. But we might have to ditch Jordan Fisher to go see the West End version because Orpheus in that version is Irish. And I don't know if you've ever spoken to an Irish person. Oh. Oh, yeah, I told you. And um, yeah, and, I, the, and the one playing Hermes is Trinidadian. And you all know what she's saying, but that's okay. I'll translate. <laughs> I've, I've personally never spoken to an Irish person. No. Just black out when it happens. No. It's for your own sake. Uh, so those were my those were my genres and my vibes. I played three thousand two hundred and fifty three songs, which people said was a lot. So I don't know what they'd be doing on Spotify. I listen to a lot of music, and I listened to one thousand six hundred and thirty six artists this year, which sounds like a ridiculous number. And then Spotify gave you your like music vibe or whatever, and yes, ma'am. Okay, I finally got into my thing. I have my top genres. No, go for it. <laughs> They're not surprising. And it's also just in a boring list. I don't get a little sandwich. Um, pop. Wow. Oh. Alternative. Rock. The monoskin. Thanks. Yeah. Monoskin. Uh, Hip hop. I don't even know where that one came from. Obviously Maisie Peters. And then... <laughs> you know, pop, pop oh, rock variety. Yeah, when I saw the pop and pop punk, I was like, "That checks out." Um, how, where does it say? How many total songs did you say you listened to? Um, I can tell you, I listened to one hundred and fourteen artists. I no. listened to two hundred and twenty-seven artists. I listened to 114 genres. I listened to 1,000 and something artists. Okay. I listened to 3,253 songs. That's championship numbers. I listened to 1,400. Chump change. Yeah. And then I listened to... I was in top 6% of listeners worldwide. Does it not say how many like minutes of music I listened to? I feel like it should say how many minutes of listen of music I listened to. Spotify does. I listened to for forty five thousand one hundred and ninety three minutes. Oh, I listened My to li- uh thirty seven thousand two hundred and sixty six. Mm, fair enough. My listening peaked on February twenty second at five hundred and eighty five minutes. But I was gonna say, Spotify gave you this like little. This is your music vibe your music whatever right and my uh i saw a really cool one my friend got a vampire and the graphic they give you like a little like disco looking graphic hers was so cool it was like a disco looking you know what the floors look like the carpet at like a like a like a roller skating rink or yeah. a bowling alley that sort of vibe that's what the kind of vibe of the graphics are Ooh. and she had a vampire so i really like that Mine, however, was very accurate. I was co- mine was the collector, yeah. and the description is, "Your taste is sublime. You listen mostly to your own playlists, and we get why." <laughs> and they're not yeah, incorrect. That tracks. They're no who. So <laughs> it's really funny. I so like I taste. said, I have one playlist um, that I just keep with me for everything, mm-hmm. but I I changed it a couple times. Um, well, actually, I changed it once. So my top playlist is 
the old playlist that I deleted in favor of starting a new one. And then <laughs> the next one is the new one that I set up. And then the next one is a, a playlist I listened to one time. It is a 30 minute long playlist. I listened to it for 30 minutes. <laughs> And one is my new music mix that I listened to for two minutes. And I remember that because I clicked it and kept trying to get out of it. But I kept getting interrupted because <laughs> I was at work. <laughs> you probably would have gotten the same vibe I got, Collector. Yeah. No one was I supposed do, to like I do what think their Spotify vibe is, is doing this better. Yeah. I mean, I think wasn't it their thing? It was their idea. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like when, you know, we had stories on, what was it, Snapchat first? And then everyone was like, we could do that, too. Well, I don't need a TikTok like, story. You know, Why do I have a TikTok story? Oh, my God, I know. Instagram, sure. TikTok, wrapped up. Yeah, Instagram Facebook? at first, I didn't get it, but now it's really nice. Yeah, yeah especially because I think people have shifted away from Snapchat, so it's good on Instagram. Yeah. But also, like, please don't make me go from an infographic about something serious to um, you at a party, because that's just some whiplash I don't need. I have I can, someone, we uh, can all see the timestamps. Why are you looking up uh, <laughs> political infographics in the club? I have a friend who's Palestinian and has posted a lot of stuff about that, but then will interject with a photo of me at the gym post 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 there's a dead body in some of these photo of me at the gym and like i get it but also what if we didn't do that the photo at the gym part to clarify yeah it's kind of a theme also Be consistent like i understand that it's important that we kind of know what's going on i don't really love seeing dead bodies when i open up um any yeah. social media and Instagram's filter thing is not super accurate because sometimes it'll say like this. Sometimes like even on the story, it'll say this post contains sensitive material. View anyway. And usually like half the time when it says that, like even the material, the material is not that bad. But then it won't do that for the ones that is like, mm -hmm. this is my dead neighbor. And I'm like, not everyone's got the stomach that I have. No. And I don't want to see that. So. But. Um. All in all, I think it's cute that we had the same second artist, and I think that's yeah. the only thing we had in common throughout the entire... Hey, I had pop on my genres. Actually, it was it's kind of like when we do the... Um, we create our own albums. A lot of my, like, six through ten thing yeah. were things that were on your, your one through five, yeah. which tracks. We always like things just in the same things, but in slightly different ways. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh, thanks for ha having me on You're my welcome. Podcast. Yeah, this is my show, <laughs> <laughs> actually, guys. If you didn't come back before the end of the year, I was genuinely going to be like, oh, for real this time, Eleanor is on, she's on a trial period right now. That's fair. She's on guest host status for a little while. <laughs> yeah, that's valid. Um, but I should be back definitely next year. Probably before that. But it's December, so I can't keep. I said probably. Probably is not a promise. Probably is as vaguely positive as you can get. I said that I w every week towards the end, I was like, Eleanor should be back next week. So at the last last week, I was like, I'm not. Clearly, I've been wrong every <laughs> single time. I'm not saying anything. I will be here. We'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we'll... Uh... I don't remember how to end this. I, that's what I'm trying to do. That's okay. Hello. Um, she has been Eleanor. I have been Kalina. We've made decent time. We'll see you next time. Yeah. What she said. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Don't quote me on that. One day we'll have an outro, but it's not today. <laughs>